What's going on, everybody? It's How To Tuesday, and today we're talking about spear fishing. Um, one of the things that I've picked up over the last few years is bow hunting, and in bow hunting, it is crucial to have your gear dialed in, have your distances dialed in, and practice, 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 practice in every condition, practice all different types of shots. And the more that you can practice, the more that you're going to be able to execute in the wild. If you get this opportunity at an elk or a deer or whatever, as an ethical hunter, you want to be able to make that shot. You want to make that kill efficiently and quickly. You also want to be able to take advantage. You might only get one opportunity. Well, spearfishing is no different. Spearfishing requires practice as well, but a lot of people might overlook that and just think, oh, well, I'm just going to be in the water and and spearfish one time a year, but you can actually practice. That's what we're going to talk to uh, my friend Tony Young today about. Tony operates a spearfishing charter. He, he fishes and spearfishes, but Forever Young Charters, he's in the Florida Keys, and he's going to tell us about how he um, instructs people to practice with their spear gun. It's really easy. You can do it in a swimming pool uh, or you can do it in the ocean if you have that available to you. But it is possible for you to be practicing this long before your trip, just like we're talking about when you're going fishing, when you're going fly fishing, or when you're going bow hunting. It's very, very important to practice beforehand so that you are an ethical hunter, an ethical fisherman. You are making the kill and also you're being successful. So here's Tony to tell us about how to practice in a swimming pool. If you have a pool, obviously it's pretty, you know, you can shoot. So you just uh, take like a speedo board and you just tape an X on it or something, drill two holes and just put some mono with the weight on the bottom. And then, so you just levitate that speedo board in the middle of your pool about, you know, like two, three feet off the bottom. And you can practice your free dive, hang on the bottom for 30 seconds, minute and a half, whatever. And, And then just practice taking those shots at that, at that board. Um, and that'll at least help you close the gap between trips. So if you're coming to the keys or a different country doing a spear fishing trip every couple months, you know, that'll help you close the gap to stay good with your gear, just like shooting targets with an arrow. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, you can't hunt all the time and you actually might only shoot an arrow at an animal a couple times a year. if, If once, you know, same goes with fish if you're, so that's, we actually have a lot of clients that come down and, um, when they're like, if they're down here, do a lot of trips with us, what we might spend just like the first part of the day, just doing that in shallow water, whether it's free diving or scuba, but it really pays off. Yeah, it does pay off. And you know, in the keys, we're able to, to use a full on spear gun, but do you also use a pole spear, um, in the keys? Um, it, it depends on the individual. So we usually, the only time that we use pole spears is when people are getting ready for a Bahamas trip. Mm. So if they, if they got like a, a day, a week in the Bahamas, then, uh, which you can only use a uh, pole spear free dive over there, of course, or Hawaiian sling. Um, so they'll book a day with us and, uh, we'll get, you know, we'll go through all their gear, make sure everything's good, get them solid on their shots. But, um, uh, for the most part in the keys, we usually use spear guns. Mm-hmm. And when you're getting somebody ready for the, the Bahamas and you are, you know, helping them with a pole spear, is it the same process you're going to get in the pool and, and shoot a board like that? Or is there a different, different way to practice with the pole spear? No, that will. And it's, you know, when we do charters, generally we just kind of uh, just jump right into spear fishing, just looking for fish. Um, the pool stuff is really good for folks that, um, like before they come down on their trip or if they're seasonal come to the keys, they have a lot of time and we might spend some time on that, but yeah, pole spear, we, we spend a lot of time in like 35, 55 feet of water, a little bit shallower. Um, and then cause the, the, if you're free diving, the hang time on the bottom is, is really going to be, it's, that's going to be the longest, right? Like trying to approach the fish and, you know, you have to get so much closer to them. Um, so we usually target like mountain snapper, mangrove snapper, um, some red grouper, stuff like that, which are a lot easier fish to shoot with a pole spear. Mm -hmm. And what about range? How do you, like when people are kind of, you know, getting into spear fishing and, you know, that's such a important thing in, in bow hunting is like, if you're at 40 yards or 50 yards, it's, you know, you gotta be dialed in and you, you really need to know exactly what your yardage is and everything. Uh, I'm sure that, that, you know, 
it's the same kind of with spearfishing. You're trying to get as close as you possibly can, obviously. But do you do you help people with how to kind of judge the range uh, when a fish is too far, when a fish is, you know, how to get close to a fish? What do you normally yep. uh, instruct people? How do you do that? Well, anybody listening, if you can find an under, if you can make an underwater range finder, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Wouldn't that be <laughs> cool? That'd be nice? Yeah, just, <laughs> that'd be sweet. But um, so one thing we do, like if folks are really new and we're introducing spearfishing, like say it's their first time, they've only been a few times, we'll take on the boat, the guns that whether they bring with them or the guns that we have for them. And uh, we'll just take the shaft out with the line and we'll actually walk it out to the boat. So our, one of our boats, 36 foot. So we we walk that shaft all the way out so they can get a visual. They'll actually hold the gun out and then they can see how far that is. Mm -hmm. Of course, everything is going to be a little closer, a little bigger underwater feeling like, but at least they can get a distance. Um, and then when they're first getting started, we always go down and they will shoot the gun at least once or twice. Um, if it's a new gun to them, like if they're using one of the bars so that they can get a feel for it underwater. Mm -hmm. But, um, as you do it more, every fish reacts a little bit differently. Like mangrove snapper, even though they're smaller fish, they're just like a blast to hunt. They like, they come straight in at you and they are very curious. And then they'll like get to this point where they're just a few feet from you. will be like, I'm not sure if I should keep coming in any closer. Then they turn sideways and then they <laughs> take off. So, so like mangrove snapper, you can shoot three feet, four feet away, whereas mutton snappers keep a far distance. So, um, Generally, I tell is like as soon as you can see detail in the fish, you know, when you can really start to pick out some of the details in the fish's face, you know, like a dog snapper has that teardrop or muttons have like those little blue marks, or as soon as you can really start to see the detail in the fish, that that usually indicates that you're close enough for a shot. You can check me out on Instagram, Captain Tony Young. Um, you can check out our website, diveyoung.com. Um, we're on Facebook as well, or just give me a call. My number is 305-680-8879. But, uh, yeah, just, just hit us up and we'd love to spend some time with you on the water for sure. Okay. All right. You should definitely do that. Tony's a good dude. All right. That's it yeah. for today. We'll be back next week with uh, another awesome guest. See you.